day, the Jews are a proud part of British society, but it wasn't always the case. Why and how did the Jews come here? This is the story of a community who died protecting its faith, and some say there was a boycott, a cherem, placed in their memory. To uncover its secrets, I visited the northern England city of York. It's a good question as to how the Jews got here. Um, they came here, we came here, in 1066. Uh, it means that British Jewry was very new compared to Italian and French and Spanish Jewry who'd already been in those lands for about a thousand years. And essentially, we came over with William the Conqueror. Uh, he came over from Normandy, he occupied this new land, England, and he wanted to bring over some people he could trust uh, as civil servants to help colonise his new country. They went to York for two reasons. Firstly, because it was a major trading city. You think of England today and you think of London and Manchester. In the Middle Ages, you would have thought of London and York. That was the place to be. Plus, there was a strong royal presence. There was a royal castle. It meant the Jews had protection if ever there was trouble. We know that the Jewish community is established here in York in the 1170s. At that time, the city was a predominantly timber and thatch city. Now we know that the Norman house in Stonegate was built by the, the Minster authorities. However, it seems likely that at least some of the Jewish community in York lived perhaps in similar sorts of houses, these very strong, secure um, stone structures. They were described as, as palaces. However, there does appear to have been um, some areas where there were perhaps concentrations of, of Jewish uh, families living in, in particular streets. There is a street in York which is called Jubbergate. Now, Jubbergate is a corruption of Jew-Brettgate. And what is interesting is that Jubbergate leads down to Coney Street. There was the location of the synagogue, the, the medieval scholar of the Jewish community. A Christian society had a big problem because Christians weren't allowed to be moneylenders, um, uh, whereas there was no objection to Jews being moneylenders, and therefore they naturally occupied this vacuum in society because everyone needs money, whether it's a farmer who needs a new wheelbarrow or a knight who's going on crusades who needs a new suit of armour. The Jews were seen as the sponges of society who then sort of uh, took money away from ordinary people and, uh, and, and gave it to the king. So there was a double dislike, and unfortunately, dislike turned into tragedy. 1189, the king dies. Joschka and Benedict of York visit London to bring generous gifts to the new monarch. Jews tried to gatecrash the coronation of Richard the Lionheart in Westminster because they wanted to gain the same rights they had had under previous kings, Henry II for instance. In doing so, however, the mob and the gate people believed that the Jews could put a curse on the king if they came in and immediately, vigorously, threw the Jews out at the beginning of a riot. The crowd sort of took offence. They sort of thought they were interlopers, pushing ahead of everybody else. And there was a minor scuffle. It turned into a riot and actually involved some Jewish deaths. The movement of the mob across England you actually took place over some six months. It was no coincidence that it was in March 1190, uh, which uh, it was Palm Sunday, which is when Christian passions against the Jews were even more hostile because the Christians were being taught about how the Jews kill God and actually of all the sins you can commit, you, you can't get worse than killing somebody's God and therefore there were sermons about how evil the Jews were and people went to church to hear that, they come out of church, see real live Jews and therefore inevitably feel antagonistic towards them. The original wooden structure has been replaced by Clifford's Tower. York Castle is built in 1067 by William the Conqueror. The first castle on the site here is built out of earth and timber. 1190 wooden keep would have had perhaps two or three wooden floors inside it. Um, it would have had a timber roof structure that would have had a lead covering on it. There was a series of mishaps uh, which culminated in tragedy. Uh, Benedict's house uh, was raided. People knew he, he died and therefore it was sort of uh, unprotected. Uh, other Jews got worried. They thought, logically at the time, they would seek refuge in the castle. 
the mob doesn't disperse, they don't go home. What they in effect do is they camp outside the castle. They set up what develops into a siege of York Castle. A Carthusian monk arrives and he starts um, sort of inciting the mob. We then have a situation where they're able to gain access to the mot and climb up to the base of the keep. They set this wooden keep on fire. The fire quickly caught hold and the, the Jews who had taken refuge, who were inside the keep, were faced with a dilemma. What do they do? Well, Yont of, of Joanny decided that the Jews would all commit suicide by the husband killing his wife and killing his children. The community killed themselves within the tower and that the last person to kill himself, the person who probably committed suicide, was Rabbi Yom Tov. There is every likelihood that Masada, which was such a searing mark in Jewish history, was well known. And in fact, it's very significant that the Christian chronicler of the time, uh, William of Newbury, actually says that one of the leaders of the uh, York Jews quoted Masada in his final speech advocating that they should commit mass suicide. There were some Jews, of course, who thought this was a step too far. They didn't commit suicide. Um, and in the morning, they sort of threw open the gates of the castle and said, look, um, we will adopt Christianity, uh, just spare our lives. But of course, it was a mistake too, because uh, the, the mob wasn't interested in converting them. The mob was only interested in killing them. On top of that, there was a financial interest. A lot of the Crusaders wanted to clear up their debts before going off on crusade. And the best way to do that was to kill the person you owned money to. And it was no coincidence that a number of the leaders of the riot just so happened to be in debt to the Jews. And it was very significant that the first thing they did after the death of the Jews was to rush to the cathedral, not to beg for forgiveness, but to destroy the records of the debts that were owed. So there was a clear financial motive to the tragedy of York. Among the people who were in the keep, amongst 150, was Rabbi Yontov of Joigny, and he is most famous for writing Om Non Kaim, which is uh, one of the piyotim, which we still say on Yom Kippur to this very day. <laughs> One of the best testimonies to the size and the, the wealth and the health of that Jewish community um, is the Jewish cemetery that we have here in York. This cemetery is one of only ten known medieval Jewish cemeteries in England. These graves are under a supermarket car park. If Jews boycott every problematic town, then we could soon run out of places to live. Despite everything, the Jews did come back to York. A congregation met here from 1886 till 1975. We used to go to a shul in Aldwark, and it was just a room basically above a carpenter's shop. Very innocuous. It was almost like it was deliberately low key so nobody would know it was there. We had a curtain to divide the men from the women. Just plain benches, very, very simple, and which had visiting rabbis who came for the services. One thing I do remember about the Jewish holidays is that there was always the problem of whether they could get enough men together to have a minion. I went through the whole school system in York, first infants, juniors, grammar school, did all my exams there, O-levels, A-levels. What's interesting, the um, story of the massacre of the Jews in York just was never mentioned. I knew nothing about it at all. My mother went to York because that was where they brought the Quakers were very strong in York and they arranged employment for her there. We never discussed the harem. She may, I'm not sure whether she would have known about it. Certainly the average visitor to York um, or people growing up in, in, in the UK would not know about the history of um, what, what happened in York to the Jews. Anti-Semitism at the time when I was at school I think was still quite an institutional part of, um, you know, of, of growing up. 
Jewishness was seen as a negative trait. There has always been a low level of anti-Semitism. Diaspora Jews take that for granted. It could be sort of odd remarks or silly jokes um, or occasional far-right parties uh, or sometimes on campus you get anti-Zionism uh, mixed up with anti-Semitism. But that's nothing like what happened in the Middle Ages. It's not institutional anti-Semitism. And if you look at British life today, the leader of the opposition party, Ed Miliband, Jewish, uh, the owner of one of the major football clubs, Chelsea, Roman Abramovich, Jewish, Head of uh, TV, Michael Grade, Jewish. Uh, Lord Chief Justice, Harry Wolfe, Jewish. Uh, Jews are embedded in English society and make a very good contribution. Uh, what happened at York didn't just have ripples within England, but had devastating effects of the Jews on the continent too. And they regarded it as a major tragedy. Uh, and uh, so much so that every year at Tisha B'Av, which is the memorial for the destruction of the temple, uh, and also, by the way, later on the memorial for the expulsion of the Jews from England, which was also on Tisha B'Av in 1290, but as part of the liturgy, a special piot, a special medieval poem, was written lamenting the death of the Jews of, the York, of York, and said, and, um, silenced are the inhabitants of the Isles, England, cut off in their delight, and uh, mourning them in the same way that the Jews of Masada were mourned. What does the average non-Jewish person uh, think when they see a plaque commemorating a Jewish tragedy of a thousand years ago? Very interestingly, when we were in Berlin last week, a group of 50 of us, one of the questions we asked as we were obsessed going from Holocaust Memorial to Holocaust Memorial, what does a non-Jew think when they're in Germany? Do they notice all these memorials, all these plaques, all these museums? And then I ask myself the question, do we notice and do we concern ourselves with the massacres in Serbia or Central Africa in exactly the same way? And I fear that we don't. Therefore, for Jews, York may be something special. And for a non-Jewish person seeing that plaque, it's an interesting thing, but no more than that, really. It seems the Jewish boycott is just an urban legend. Certainly there is no synagogue today in York. An earlier example of the urban legend goes like this. The Jews were perceived to be killing Christian children and using their blood to make unleavened bread, matzot, for the festival of Passover. This is known as the blood libel. Absolute pack of lies but unfortunately and sadly it proved fatal for the Jews. On Friday the 16th of March 1190, the great Sabbath before Passover, the whole Jewish community of York met their death. Right here. Jews remained in this country for a further century. In the year 1290, after their usefulness to the crown had been exhausted, King Edward I expelled all Jews. He ordered them out of England. Maybe it was a strange twist of fate that just a few months later, the defeated Crusaders finally left the Holy Land. This was a dark period in British history and yet another sad episode in the history of Judaism. Barry Levinson, York, England.